It's Movie Time is produced by John DeSando. Listen to shows and read reviews online at WCBE.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Mindy McFan. And this is It's Movie Time. Yes, it is. I have so many uh, talented guests, but none with as varied a background as you have, Mindy. And I've asked you to join me in discussing A Thousand and One. Yes. The new movie, and, and particularly because I think you know a little bit about New York City. A bit. A uh, bit. Uh, uh, Not as much as I'd like ever, uh, but uh, a bit. Uh, uh, and I think you have now both of your boys are there. Yes. Yes. Oh, gosh. Uh, so, A Thousand and One is a quirky little movie that uh, most people would not see unless we told them about it, right? I would imagine right. so, but I'm telling everybody. <laughs> Good. Tell me why. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I haven't seen a movie I liked this much in a very, very long time. Oh, I, I just kind of knew it. <laughs> uh, you know, although our movies, when we discuss, tend to be a little bit heavy, mm -hmm. uh, but that's because we're ready to do it. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and so, so, what's the particular draw on this? There's so many things for me. I, I thought, I mean, especially because this is a low-budget film, I th it was so tight. Man, she used every single dime correctly. <laughs> Nothing seemed cheap. Every minute, the music was well done. Um, I, the B-roll film, I don't know where she got that because yeah. it wasn't set in present day. Yeah. So that the mixture of that in there was smooth. Yes. I didn't feel like, oh, a cheap movie, they couldn't afford all the sets, or they couldn't afford to shut down, whatever. So, um, because it's, I think it starts in 1992, if I'm not mistaken. It's somewhere in the early 90s. Yeah. yeah I've, I've seen 92, 93, 94. Yeah. Uh, but certainly the B-roll that she had is just wonderful. And if it gets a little grainy and dull, it's all the better. Yes, because that, I mean, that's my memory of New York back then. It did look gross, you know? I mean, there was a time, New York looks very different to me now than it did back then. So um, I thought it was, it, it really captured a moment in New York. Um, it was a, a great, uh, the hair, the costuming, the acting was superlative. All right, so our director is A.V. Rockwell. First mm -hmm. time for her, oh, I think. Yeah. I love her. Yeah, and uh, uh, Tivana Taylor plays Inez. Mm -hmm. And she's apparently an R&B actress uh, or performer. Right. And a uh, beautiful woman. Yeah. Uh, strong. Oh, it, I, I thought her acting was amazing. I didn't feel her acting for one minute. Yeah. I did not feel like she was acting even for one minute. I just thought she was just breathtaking. Well, the heart of this is that she's she's trying to create a family. She's trying, she wants a family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she it, it depends on whether you consider it a mistake or not. She abducts who may be, may be her son or not. I can figure it out as we get to the end. Well, at the beginning, we think it's her son. Yeah, right. We think she's pulled him out of foster care after yeah. she got out of jail. Right. And right. that's the way the story she, goes. She's been in Rikers Island. I heard. I read somebody who said it was just a year, but I also read heard five years she'd been in Rikers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think being one month in Rikers would change you forever. I can't imagine. Oh, oh my God. I can't imagine. <laughs> well, and I even what led her there to the begin with, the, the backstory of that was probably horrifying. Yeah, right. I mean, th there's nothing as violent as poverty. <laughs> oh, there's just yeah. nothing as violent as poverty. Um, in that early 90s, as they depicted, well, in the background, some of the background noise, you could hear Giuliani, mm -hmm. and we remember him from a very tough approach to street life. Mm -hmm. uh, the stop and frisk. I don't know business. if that was, wasn't that, was I that think, Giuliani? I thought that was... Uh, that Bloomberg? Was it? Bloomberg, I yeah. thought so. Because right, it so was when the kid was older. Okay, where so he it, was getting yeah, stopped on the street. That's true, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but uh, Giuliani was a law and order guy, wasn't he? Well, I don't know. Yeah. Just a... No, I know. I no. won't even go into that. I know. I know. We'll just say he was what he was. <laughs> He'll be the next to take the stand. Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. I mean, um, so, it is Harlem, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, when we, when I grew up, Harlem was a tough place. Mm -hmm. Its reputation was tough. Right, right. Uh, but it was changing. Yeah. Yeah, what was happening? Yeah, it was being gentrified throughout through the course of the movie, yes. not at the beginning of the movie, but that's it. It, it follows her and to New York, um, 
and an evolution. Yeah, there's really and change. Exactly. There are two parts to this film. Right. One is her odyssey. Mm -hmm. And it's a tough one, but you know, I gotta say I admire her so much. She's made bad decisions, mm -hmm. but she's also been strong. Well, yeah. I mean, she could die or survive. That I mean, that that is the brutality of poverty. It's yeah. no different than war. You have a choice, choice, and I put that in quotes, um, to survive or die. And she decided to survive as best she could. And she had no tools given to her. Nothing. Wow. wow. I mean, nothing. She yeah. had to figure out and do the best she could. But you're you're talking about that that poverty leaves you in a desert with nothing. And now you got to figure it out. Yes. Yes. Nice. Nice. Nicely put. Uh, and we watch her, and we're there. I mean, the first shots are her uh, tracking shot of her going down the street. Mm -hmm. We're passing all the graffiti. Right. We're seeing it's really early '90s Harlem, New York, mm -hmm. and the, the camera angle is a low angle that that looks up at her mm -hmm. and and gives her a kind of makes her regal. Right. I, mean, I just love the way that the director has situated us with a woman who is making her way. Yeah. And uh, I think she's probably worked on the street. Would it be, that be a right guess that she's... Mm, no? I I, that was not my impression. Okay. Um, I, I she, she definitely knew how to hustle. That's why she was doing hair. Um, but that's a lucrative position, right, you yeah. know? So I presume she was doing hair in her living room, on the street, in parks, whatever. Right. Wherever she could, she was doing hair. Because she did have... From somewhere she acquired that skill. Yes, a, yes. An aunt, somebody passed yes. that on to her. Because you get the impression her parents were non-existent. And um, how and, about her son? Yeah. Well, you, you, at the beginning of the movie, what you know is that she got out of jail and you are led to believe that she pulled him, stole him out of foster care. Right. To uh, save him, her, whatever way you want to take that. Um, and that's what you believe till the end of the movie. Um, I was a bit dismayed in the depiction of the son. Now we have three different actors playing it. Yes. It's about almost 20 years, I think, yeah. in that. Uh, a little bit to speak because he's so inarticulate or quiet. The it, little one? Yeah. Okay. And, and then as we move, he remains still somewhat subdued, mm -hmm. but we discover him to be bright. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I just didn't have, I didn't have him developed in a way that I believed in him the way I believe in her. How do you, how do you respond? I mean, it's, it's just interesting. Well, I, I think if you if a child who grows up who is completely, um, well, he's suffered abuse in the foster home, we're led to believe, and he uh, obviously has been abandoned um, in his mind's eye by his mother and his non-existent father in his mind, all of these things, and he's very, very smart. So you have choices in those situations to be either so angry that you are just violent all the time, or you shut down. Yes, yes. And I presume, intellectually, he thought it was safer to shut down, so he Good. just behaved. I, yeah, I, I can buy he that. He just, he shut it all down, yeah. because it was that, or he would have yeah. put his fist through a wall every single day. And ironically, as you were describing it, he's angry at his mother for not snapping back at the uh, landlord. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they're, they're, they're making their... Their improvements to their apartment. I love that. Boy, did that give me an insight. Yeah. He's coming in, this white landlord mm -hmm. coming in, and they're going to do some improvements. Yeah. Oh, well, that's great. Yeah. Imagine that. It does seem a bit out of, out of it, doesn't it? Well, I think it was really good at depicting the uh, how you are when you rent and you are poor. You are at somebody's mercy. Yes. You you are trapped and you are at somebody's mercy. You might as will be enslaved, as far as I'm concerned. And I presume he wasn't used to seeing his mother in that exactly. position. Exactly. She always took care of things. She was the strong one. She took yeah. care of the father. The, you know, she was the one with the guts. And to see her cowed by somebody because she knows this is it's this or the street. Boy, it's, was that's probably sure. terrifying. Yeah. Yes, sir. She doesn't have somebody who will take them in yeah. for a couple of months. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 But. It, it took me just a little while to figure out what was going on, which is what you had said, the gentrification. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the secondary story here. Yeah. But it is Harlem going through the inevitable it's, gentrification. It's a lot of places. Wow. That, yeah. that, that you have no power when you are poor. Wow. And so people move you around like chess pieces. 
and in New York City, uh, you are going to be um, subjected to movement as people buy properties and transfer and transform them. And in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> well, now there you go. Yeah. Boy, isn't that the truth? Yes, it is. I mean, that's part of the beauty I think that you like, and I certainly like as I'm talking to you, uh, depicting a, a universal experience mm -hmm. for people who are poor. Yes. For people who do not have the power. Mm -hmm. I kind of like Lucky. Yeah, absolutely. What about him? Well, I, I like <laughs> that he they didn't um, give him any stereotypes, you know? He, he, he just, I mean, he just was a man trying to do the best he could um, in difficult situations. Um, I think when she said it best, when she said we're both broken people, and how do you manifest a loving relationship when you've never been loved in your whole life? Yes. I mean, you're making something up that is as abstract as speaking, you know, another language. Because yeah. you are speaking a language you are not familiar with. Um, and the fact that they could have any kind of relationship was miraculous. Yeah, yeah miraculous. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, uh, there are some people who think that he's the father of Terry. That that I, that was not my impression. Right, I know it wasn't mine either. But yeah, you read somebody who commented yeah. that he was. Anyway, Mindy McFan, I think we have other things to talk about in our upcoming podcast. Sound called good. Back Talk. Would you yeah. have to go to WCDE for the podcast experience? Got to do it. Mindy, what do you advise our audience? Absolutely <laughs> go see this movie. Absolutely <laughs> go see this movie. It's a thousand and one. Yeah. And I'm going to.